Okay, now we have question number six from the mock exam that I made for my students for P1, um, International A Level. Here we're asked, first of all, to factorize completely this expression, which is like a cubic expression. Um, x cubed plus 10x squared plus 25x. So you have x cubed, this is part A I'm answering, plus 10x squared plus 25x. Now to factorize this completely, what we need to do is see if there's any common factors, and there is. x is a common factor. So then we're left with x squared plus 10x plus 25 inside the bracket. So you have x times x squared plus 10x plus 25, and that will factorize. Again, you have a quadratic here, which is factorizable, and you can see it's actually a perfect square, because you're going to have x plus 5 times x plus 5. Two numbers that multiply to give you 25 and add to give you 10. Well, it's 5 and 5. So x plus 5 times x plus 5. You can write it like this, or you could write it like this if you wish. Both of them are perfectly fine. x times x plus 5 squared. Either of these are perfectly fine as a um, <coughs> way to factorize it. Then part B says sketch the curve with the equation y equals x cubed plus 10x squared plus 25x, showing the coordinates of the points at which the curve cuts or touches the x-axis. And there's a little clue here in the, in the question for how things will be. But basically here we're going to have to plot the, the graph of this function. So this function becomes y equals x times x plus 5 squared. Okay, so this is part B now. So we're going to do a sketch. So I'm going to draw a pair of axes. Okay, now what do we know about this? We know that it's cubic. Okay, we know that the highest power is x cubed. Okay, it's cubic. We know that the coefficient of a of the x cubed is positive. You can see, All right? It was x cubed, one x cubed. So we can say that um, a is greater than 0, so therefore it rises and rises. If it was a is less than 0, if it was a negative x cubed term, it would fall and fall. Okay, that's how I like to, to explain it. Anyway, so we know it's going to have this type of shape, all right? Um, now, we've got to find out where it crosses the axis. Okay, where does it cross the, x, the y axis? Okay, it crosses the y axis. Any function across the y-axis when x is equal to 0. Now, if we put x equals 0 into here, we get y equals 0. Okay, so that means it crosses the y-axis at the origin. Where does it cross the x-axis? Okay, it crosses the x-axis when y is 0. Now, when y is 0, you have x times x plus 5 squared equals 0. So you have x equals 0. And you have x plus 5 squared equals 0, so you have x equals minus 5, but you can think of it as being twice. x equals minus 5 twice. Let me just move this along here. I can see that it's going to be on that side of it. Minus 5. This is your y-axis, this is your x-axis, and that's your origin. Okay, so we know when you have a double solution like this, when you have a squared bracket, Okay, um, you know, the, the, the bracket is squared. It's called a repeated root. When it's a repeated root, it doesn't cut through the, the x-axis at that point. It turns on the x-axis at that point. Okay, so when you, let's put minus 5 here. So I know it, this, this curve, as I said, is, is a type of curve that, that's going to rise and rise. It's going to cut through at the origin, okay, when x is 0. We'll cut through there, and here it will turn. So if, if that's going to be the case, it has to have this type of shape where it's coming from below, it gets to minus 5 and it turns on minus 5 without cutting through, it comes down and then it turns again and it goes up through the origin. And it goes up like that. I'm trying to be as neat as I can. <clears throat> I want you to try and be careful not to make it look too weird, otherwise you might lose some marks with this, seeing what I saw in the January marking. So this is your equation y 
equals x times x plus 5 squared. Okay? That's the equation that we just were asked <coughs> to sketch. Okay, so let's see what it says here. Did we leave anything out for part A, for part B, sorry? It says sketch the curve showing the coordinates of the points at which the curve cuts or touches the x-axis. So I guess that's fine. You could write this as minus 5, 0 if you want, just to be clear that this is minus 5, 0. And this is 0, 0. Okay, well, but it's not, I don't think that's necessary to put the minus 5 there. That's fine. Okay, so that's basically part B done. Now part C, um, the point with coordinates minus 3, 0 lies on the curve with this equation y minus x plus a cubed plus 10 times x plus a squared plus 25 times x plus a find the two possible values of a all right so now thinking about this and comparing these two equations with each other compare this equation and this equation okay so these two this is what we just sketched and you can see that they kind of have some link with you got a 10 here you got a 25 here you got something cubed here basically what's happened is if you can see that the x has been replaced by x plus a so in fact this if this is if we call whoops if we call this equation here f of x let's call this f of x is going to be this then this will be called f of x plus a you've basically replaced all of the x's with x plus a so you have instead of x cubed you have x plus a cubed instead of x squared you have x plus a squared instead of 25 times x you have 25 times x plus a so the x has been replaced by x plus a so this is a, a, the transformation that's taken place is this so this is a translation okay when you add something to the function this is actually added inside the function Okay, so the, the values that will be affected will be the values um, on, on the x. The x coordinates are going to be affected and you're going to have to take away a from the x values. Okay, so we've got to find the two possible values of a for this, um, for minus 3, 0 to lie on the curve. Now, if minus 3, 0 lies on the curve, there's two possible um situations where that can be true. Let me just combine these together because I split them up put them separately. Okay, there's two possible ways for that to take place. For minus 3, 0. Let me just mark minus 3, 0. Minus 3, 0 is about here. Oops. Minus 3 is about here. There's two possible ways for that to have taken place. Either the curve has moved in this direction so that it turns on minus 3 in which case it has moved two spaces to the right okay so it's either f x if it moves two spaces to the right you're going to put minus 2 that's one possibility in that case a is minus 2 the second case okay this is part c I'm doing now okay the second case is Remember, it started from this position here. This, the second case, I think it's split up again. Okay. The second case is if it cuts through at minus 3, in which case it's moved, it's moved in this direction. Okay, so it's moved three spaces to the left. If it's moved three spaces to the left, okay, if it's moved three spaces to the left, which is minus 3, 0. So my pen's not working very well today. Okay, then that's, this, that's right, f. And you'll have x plus 3 because it's always the opposite when you've got a horizontal transformation. Okay, so it's f x plus 3. In that case, a is equal to positive 3. Okay, so those are the two possible values of 3. Sorry about this pen. I have to restart my computer in a minute. But that's why it's all lagging and stuff. But that's based, those are the two values of A for this curve um, to be transformed 
in the way mentioned. Either it's moved two spaces to the left, to the right, sorry, in which case it's going to be a's minus two, or it's moved three spaces to the left from that point, the point where it cuts through the origin, now cuts through minus three. So it's moved three spaces to the, to the left, in which case a is positive three, because when it's inside the function, it's always opposite. Okay, so if it's plus three inside, it moves to the left. Minus two, it moves to the right. So this is minus three, zero, and here this would be two, zero. Okay, and there we have it. That's the answer to this question, A, B, and C. Thank you for watching.